So in the bottom left, we've got the child, and their opponent's in the top right, uh, Horus. You know, I could I could definitely point out some things for, you know, room for improvement, but I think that's the, the fantastic part of RTS, you know. You've got to uh, really try to stay objective and think about, you know, how, how can I improve what I did wrong there. Um, and, and, and that's just a very important part of the learning process overall. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do think you played uh, very well. And meanwhile, Child going for four farm double here. I love this deck out of the Child, man. This is like some old school stuff. Super tier one heavy. You know, got the skunks to kind of hang out in the mid game. Got the falcons if this ends up going to the late game. But I don't think the child wants this to go to the late game. Yeah, uh, always feel free to, to send me replays. TV at gmail.com. Uh, and I'm happy to, to cast your matches. Maybe some, some wins that you're proud of. Or, or some losses you want some input on. And this attack from the child is actually working very well. One pig goes down already. Horus not quite able to get up the right amount of units they're looking for to defend this. I, I, I don't think I like the toads to defend this. I think maybe the uh, just two lizard warrens would have been better. But again, this is one of the areas where it's a little bit difficult for lizards. They are not the best units on defense. Uh, Tiki Gray also just started doing a, a replay casting show that, that's really more centered on um, high level analysis. You know, I, I try to be be fun and, and have a good time with, with the feast. You know, I, I think I give out some decent advice too, but the, the general purpose is is more of like entertainment. The child keeping this aggression going and is going to pick up some more pigs, and I think this is just too much damage here. This is a tournament match, so Horus is gonna hang on. Yeah, it looks like Horus did end up ditching the toads and getting into the lizards. But yeah, killing that last pig there. There's only two pigs left. I think Horus is gonna have to tap. Probably would have tapped earlier if this was a ladder match, but this is a tournament match. And, and you know, that's one thing we've been seeing a lot more lately uh, as well. I, I've been experiencing it a lot on the ladder. Like, people are not afraid to rush. And, and that rush, I mean, just dealt game-ending damage there. See you later, Mocha. And and now Horus is just in shambles. Again, I think if this was a ladder match, Horus probably would have tapped. But this is a tournament. So I totally understand why Horus is staying in. You know, if anything else, maybe Horus can try to just eke out some more information. Like, for example, Horus sees that the child has totes, right? That is something Horus wouldn't have known if they tapped earlier. But these squirrels are just going to doof down this mill. Very quick, aggressive game. A nice, cheesy opener from the child gonna grab him the quick victory I need to fix some of these I gotta I gotta do a few things for the stream like the size of the names aren't quite right on the scoreboard here I do I really need to fix the quality thing I want to make sure people can watch it at, at any of their quality options do these bots have been out of control lately Let me see. Band. Nice. Got him. Get out of here, bot. Okay. So nice quick victory there for the child. And we will head into game number two. Playing in the bottom left, keeping that same deck. We've got the child and their opponent to the right, changing it up this time around. We've got Horus. Squizzard coming out here from Horus. <clears throat> and historically, Squizzard was actually really, really good. I, I'm 
I'm curious to see how it fares this match. Again, I, I think what might end up happening is Horus just might have to use a couple of, you know, kind of go one or the other and use that secondary tier one to just build like one or two Warrens up, try to get them into the Toads if the child goes really crazy with the Toads. Um, but but Squizzard used to kind of be a nice way to deal with opponents going for like a tier two, like a Squirrel Skunk push. You could actually deal with that really effectively uh, with, with just kind of equal food value of, of Squizzard. But I'm a little bit more pessimistic on, on how Squizzard will fare uh, in, in the four skunk meta. I, I think once you get up to those four skunks, the, the lizards really start having uh, a harder time. For one, getting the, the full surrounds, because if all four skunks are standing next to each other, it's, it's hard for all the lizards to, to find the tiles to actually get that surface area. But that is a lot of theory, and what we've seen out of the child so far is aggression. He's got a ton of the tier 1 in the deck. I like that he's still got the moles. We did see the moles earlier on Horus's stream. Still kind of kind of do a thing, you know. Still be nice for some, some timing pushes and some aggression. And looking at the child's deck, I think that's exactly what he wants to do here. <clears throat> I'm curious if the child will really get up to any tier 2 at all. Or if they're just going to spam a lot of tier 1 and kind of hope the opponent like tries to expand or tries to get into double tier 2. I think going, you know, getting that double tier 2 in the early game is very, very strong. Not just in 4 skunks, but any way you want to slice it. I mean, I think 4 cams is good or skunk cam or, or skunk snake. Really any combination that you so desire. But I think, it, especially if you're somebody playing super aggressive, there might be a little bit of a window uh, to get something done if the opponent goes for too many tier 2 in the early game. But however, Horus's build so far is very safe. You're know, just getting into that tier two, uh, single tier 2. And the child is looking for some aggression here. And I like just the three lizards. Oh, but is this the second tier 2 going down? He just sold a tier 1 Warren. I think the intent was to get into that second tier 2. And the child's attack just comes at this time where unfortunately Horus was saving up the money for that second tier 2 and just sold a tier 1 Warren that they desperately needed at the moment. The child's got that Mole Warren here on the front lines to help reinforce, but the child's commander does go down. However, I well, it does matter a little bit. This Mole Warren will get taken out. Oh, actually, the child's able to, uh, to keep it alive. And if the child's commander didn't go down, this warrant, this tier one warrant right here, already uh, would have been knocked out. These cams just not having enough supporting units to to really be strong here. And the child just might have enough momentum to keep the pressure on. And this is what's so great about this heavy tier one style. I mean, you get the new reinforcements into the battlefield so very quickly. And you can just muster up this new army, you know, immediately and just keep sending in waves and waves. You know, as it takes the, the 40 seconds for the 2 tier 2 to rebuild, you just aren't given that time. And the child with some nice attacks here, but I do think what is really important to note is I think the reason this worked as well as it did was that Horus had sold off a tier 1 Warren in order to transition into double tier 2 right before the attack came in. That really took a lot of the wind out of the sails of the defense. And I, I think when you see that mini tier 1 as well, you know, trying to get into multiple tier 2 is, is very difficult. But it, it's like that, it's like that holy grail, you know, if you can get there, man, if you get those four cams out, it is just going to be so strong. So it is quite tempting. But I think the child just takes it from here. Let's see if Horus can manage to hold on. But even if they do, so much of the economy is already in shambles. Unfortunately here for Horus, uh, a couple of the starting farms were farms that did not get destroyed. So if, if Horus had that little better of, of RNG, and that's not something you can depend on. I, I How do I put it? Like I don't think it's the RNG hurt. 
porous right there, if that makes sense, as much as it is, it could have helped them. Uh, because they would have been on four farms versus four farms after that five minute mark. But really good aggression coming out from the child there. Taking that nice win. The Panaguire. Yeah, man. Panic wire is real. All right, game number three. Let's go. Spawning in the bottom, we've got the child. An opponent to the left, Horus the Holy. All right, Horus, bringing out a totally different style here. Got the ferrets, got the wire, and the mines. Meanwhile, the child just sticking with that same deck. And again, I, I feel like a broken record because I bring this up so often, but it is really cool to see how different players approach the, the series. You know, do you, do you stick with one deck that you've practiced a whole lot, or do you try to bring out multiple compositions? Honestly, I, I think that kind of comes down to how much you, you get to prepare for your matches. You know, if you're, if you're a little bit casual you know only get to play a little bit of ranked here and there it's probably smarter to just go ahead and stick with the one uh composition you're you're practiced with right whereas if you're somebody who gets to to play a decent amount of the ladder and, and you can test out various things i do think you have a distinctive advantage uh changing up the compositions from match to match there there are exceptions to that i i think the meta is a little bit too young to kind of crown the the holy grail composition we have seen players like erlu and this guy in the past you know kind of champion that approach but i think the difference here is that those were in really established metas right where you essentially can say all right I, i've put together this composition and for these reasons it is it is very powerful in this current meta the child trying to get some mole aggression going. Nice wire here from Horus. And I think this was the, on the back of the child scouting that very quick tier 2. Typically, uh, it, it is slightly risky to go 8 farm single tier 1 into tier 2. However, I, I too totally understand why players would be more inclined to do so on this patch since the moles did get uh, uh, nerfed. You know, moles are typically what can, can punish that, right? Like, if you don't open up 8-farm double, you, you can get punished by an opponent who has the moles and can put on the aggression. But I think it totally makes sense in a lot of situations, especially from Horus's point of view. You know, the map is nice and large. Most likely, your opponent doesn't have moles because the general consensus is that they aren't so good at the moment. So it makes sense to try to get out that, that quick tier 2. And Horus trying to get up to this double skunk uh composition you know the four skunks very very strong and i i think that's uh a nice way for a variety of styles to buffer being greedy you know because it, it is really hard to attack into four skunks um i i'm interested as the the meta continues to develop if people crack that code effectively and they're like, okay, with this composition, you can bust in on a four skunk defense and just knock it out no problem. <clears throat> maybe it's double cams, maybe it's skunk cam, maybe it's skunk snake, maybe it's mass lizard, you know, whatever it is. But I, I think for now, the four skunks are, are pretty nice. And I like how the child is approaching this. He's like, all right, you're going to go for four skunk skunks, I'm going to go for four falcons. And I'm curious if, you know, the child knows that the Horus, uh, Horus set up full second base sat. Horus, or I'm sorry, the child could try to do something like bust through this wire with moles. I love this harassment, by the way. And Horus really doesn't have a whole lot to contest it. It's only one falcon, so these squirrels will be able to deal with it. But as this falcon count comes up, I mean, Horus did sell off that tier 1 to get that additional greed. Now, keep in mind, Horus does have a much superior economy at the moment. Here we go, now the child comes in and builds those uh, four extra farms there. 
crack that toad. Yeah, toads could be it for sure. I, I don't think it's unbeatable, but I, I just think it's a strong opening to be greedy with. And right now, people don't have the best response. But yeah, I mean, it might just be something like Mass Toad. You know, these four Falcons seem okay. A couple of them did go down there, though. Dude, Horus is so turtled in here. With the defense, with the Falcons. The child does have moles, and the moles can attack the wire, but with that many wire, do you really want to risk trying to bust through with the moles? Meanwhile, Horus is trying to play the Falcon game. Going into Mass Falcon, and we're just going to kind of have a, a race to who can put together the more superior air army here. The four toads coming in from both sides. Now, the big thing that Child has going for them here is Horus doesn't really have a third base option. <clears throat> Horus got away with that really greedy early game with this barbed wire skunk defense. But Horus has got to get out on the map. And Horus doesn't necessarily have to kill the opponent, but Horus has got to at least say, like, the spot that they're standing right now, like, that is Horus's territory, you know? If the child controls this high ground, then he just controls the entire map. But Horus is slamming through here still. All the skunks alive on the ground. The child's going to have to pack up and sell what they can. Now, getting additional reinforcements for Horus is going to be difficult. You can see a lot of those Tier 2 warrants are deep in the red. Tin farm economy is nice to try to support this. As more and more Falcons are flying out. And it's hard when you're trying to stay on the front lines to have the time to go home and sell. Like, I think Horus knows that they need to sell off, like, at least one Tier 2 warrant here. Uh, and you can see that they tried to, but you just don't have the time. You know, while you're on the offense. But there are just too many Falcons in the sky here. <clears throat> And I think Horus just wins this. Falcons are very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Razor's Edge kind of unit, you know? It, like, it can swing so fast when you get Falcons in these high numbers. You know, you take the engagement and your opponent's got, and you're both going for a lot of Falcons and they've just got a few more than you. It can really, really hurt. And I like this from the child, this last ditch. Hail Mary effort here. Just going to build into a ton of lizards. But that's where the skunks come in. The four skunks on the ground will help buffer and support and tank uh, for the falcons in the air. And it's a shame for the child. There really isn't like a backdoor base race option here. Alright, Horus is going to move in. And now the child's units are kind of stuck. He's got half his army over here. He's got half his army from the top he's gonna get a good concave but again just with the raw firepower the raw numbers of what Horus has got this is not gonna work and Horus gonna put a point up on the board fighting back and making this a series here <clears throat> That means we're on match number four. We're going to do this series. I'm going to take a very brief break after that, like a minute or two. And then we have one more afterwards, Erlu versus Marmu. Super hyped for that. And let's hop into game number four here. All right, spawning in the right-hand side, we've got Horus. Their opponent to the left, the child. Both players changing things up this time around. Both players opting for that board, keeping the Skunk Falcon Squirrel. Interesting call with the Pigeons, though. The Pigeons... Hmm. The Pigeons are neat, right? I mean, historically, yeah, you, you spam them with Boar and Badger, and that seems okay. But if you anticipate, like, okay, this might come down to, like, four Skunk versus four Skunk, you know, the player has got a, a couple pigeons to maybe help heal up their skunks. That could that could make a pretty significant difference. I'm curious if that'll play a role this match. Big maps and a map that kind of favors Horus here. You know, the child does get that second base and kind of gets a third that's a little bit spread out, but I don't think that'll be a big deal. Horus doesn't have lizards or moles or anything like that or even chameleon or snake. 
to try to really take advantage of how spread out those bases are. Well, really, I mean, you can look at it like the child's got like four mills here, you know. You'd probably go one, two, uh, three up top. And yeah, upon further examination, I almost like this better for the child. The child, by the way, rushing again. And I think Horus should be okay. It's gonna be close. These Warrens will take some hits. Maybe the child gets a Warren. I think these squirrels might just come out in time. Oh man, the child's gonna commit and is gonna get that Warren. Gonna lose a couple squirrels for it. But overall, I, I think that's fine. Uh, for both sides, really. You know, yeah, it sucks losing that Warren, but Horus took the better trade and had the uh, pigs out a little bit faster. And Horus gonna go straight into Skunk from here. If the child really keeps this pressure on... Let's see, does the child just keep massing lizards? No, gonna go into Squizzard now. Maybe an expansion? Seems to be what he's got in store. And Horus gets away with the skunks, and the skunks are definitely gonna help, but I kinda like the squizzard versus just one set of skunks and the squirrels. But again, once Horus can get up to that second pair of skunks is is where the compositional uh, matchup starts to favor them. Child did make a big commitment to Eco here. And did Horus get to scout it? Horus actually didn't. <clears throat> so Horus not exactly sure what's coming up, but gonna go for the boar. Alright, really fast tier 3 coming out here from Horus. And if the child scouts it, the child's got some good answers to try to deal with it. Oh my gosh, the child might actually just end up sniping the Warren. The child with a huge run around. Horus does not know. The child's moving in. He's gonna see that boar Warren. He's gonna go after it immediately. Horus did sell it off for some change, but did not get the full refund. Oh my god, the child. Big plays coming out there. And now I feel like the child is very far ahead. They've already got the economy established. Just gotta keep massing tier 1 though. I don't know if this is the right approach moving forward, because this defense that, that Horus has set up with these supplemental turrets should be quite nice against this. And if Horus can get ahead in economy, <clears throat> that that would be very great for him. Again, the child going for fast falcons. It's not something we typically see. But the lizard falcon composition is a little bit interesting to me because, you know, the lizards will do such a good job of getting in there, of tanking the damage. You know, kind of just being your general boots on the ground. And on paper, that does allow for the Falcons to sit in the back line and get a lot of damage done. However, Horus, again, going for this Tier 3. This time around, he's got a little bit more positional awareness here with the turrets. This is the only avenue to really sneak through. And if the child tried to do that again, the guns would start blazing. Child getting into their own bo uh, boar. Horus getting a pretty okay scout here. Does see uh, that the opponent is on 8 farm full saturation on that natural. Does not see the, the boar from the opponent though. The child has not scouted Horus's boar either. Decent money management here from Horus right when that boar warren is done. Very shortly after the tier, uh, the 180 food was there to pay for it. And you know what? This is a relatively long window in Tooth and Tail time, anyways, for this this boar. Horus's boar is about 20 to 30 seconds ahead of the child's. And if Horus can strike in. Oh, now Horus prop did Horus see the boar? Oh my god! Ugh. If Horus moves out immediately when the boar is done. Maybe they can start the engagement, 
before the child has their own board, but they have to go like right now. They cannot waste a single second. This board needs to be constantly moving across the board, but I don't think that's what Horus is going for. Horus instead gonna get that third base up and running, just kind of wants to have the board. Now the child has seen it, and since Horus did not attack immediately, the child's got their own boar up and running. But I, I like Horus's comp a little bit better for this board versus boar. The pigeon falcons are kind of here for the child, but that is a lot of lizards. The child needs to make sure not to lose all these lizards to the big daddy boar. It needs to, to wait till that boar is taken care of and then move in with the lizards. But Horus is not messing around. He's moving in on this very critical second base. It's going to go down immediately. And the child, a little bit of indecision there. It looked like they thought about going for the base race, but then says, no, I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to defend this. But the damage has already been dealt, even if the child defends this. Oh my gosh, all these lizards from the child just getting annihilated very quickly. And Horus even taking a strong engagement here. Like, the child needed to win that engagement in flying colors. And, well, I guess they kind of do. You know, lots of falcons still left over. The boar is still left over. And this is it for the child. He's got to move in right here, right now. Try to win the game immediately. But the thing is, the child is going to starve out. The child does not have money to take a mill. Going to move this over. I like this idea. You know, get to work on knocking out these bases, but these Falcons are a little bit exposed. The child had to leave his army out here on the front line to just kind of deal with it and cross his fingers, but that is going to allow Horus to have the advantage of being able to target fire where the child cannot. Horus did a good job of knocking out all the Falcons. And oh man, such a close match, but the child will starve to death now. 100% confirmed. Does not have enough time to get another mill up and running. And, oh, they're going to wait. They're going to wait for the starvation. Yep, just going to let the starvation happen. There it is. Actually losing from the lost condition. It's kind of similar in all RTS games, right? Like, most of the time, you tap out once it's, like, the point of no return. You can no longer really win from there. But the actual lost condition in Tooth and Tail is that you are not gathering resources for a full minute. Or you no longer have any grist mills or campfires on the map. All right, we are down to the last match in this best of five. Both series so far tonight going all the way to game number five. Always really hyped to see. And then after that, again, I will take just a very brief break. And, af and then we will get into the Premier League match. Definitely don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss that one. I'm just like, I'm being OCD about this scoreboard. We do have great viewership tonight, so I, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks again, as always. If you're not sure exactly what's going on here, we are doing a preseason cup for Tooth & Tail Championship 2021. Just kind of a fun mini tournament, uh, a reason to get guys and gals to get on the ladder and, you know, work out a little bit, keep their Tooth & Tail game strong, explore the new meta with the new patch. And we are kind of in a round robin between the three divisions which will ultimately go to a standard bracket-style tournament. And it's really fun. And if you want to get down on the next event, you will be able to sign up for TNT Championship 2021 in about a month or two. And as always, I really need replays for my replay casting show. Please submit those to toothandtailtv at gmail.com. And I plan on actually, normally I do that on Friday nights. I'm going to do it tomorrow night this week because I have plans on Friday and I don't want to just straight up skip it. So uh, please don't delay. Submit your replays today <laughs> so I have enough ammo uh, for tomorrow. Yes, I wanted to be cheesy and make that rhyme. Okay, let's go. Spawning on the right-hand side, we've got Horus the Holy. And their opponent to the left, the child. Here in the last match of the series, all the way to the best of five. What are the decks that we got brought out here? Horus, championing champion of the ferrets, ferret, ferret master Horus here. Love to see it. Four farm single from Horus here, but it's just a fake out into economy. 
You gotta be careful when you do that sort of thing, though, because if your opponent, like, responds with a 5-farm double, and you go into 8 farms, and all of a sudden, you you can be the one who gets attacked, and you kinda played yourself, you know. But Horus is aware of this. He's just gonna get up to 6-farm, and then build a Warren. I love to see this little bit of, of maneuvering in the early game. It's really interesting. This is definitely the kind of map to do that sort of thing on, because the rush distances are so short that early pre-farm pre-eight farm aggression uh, can be quite effective. I'm gonna get this uh, emergency turret up and running. I think it's in a good spot and nice timed, nicely timed as well. Gonna get here right before the squirrels are able to, to deal with it. And this will allow Horus to save a little bit of money, only spending 60 food versus 120 food for a Warren and three squirrels. And try to get into Oh, the child, what are you doing? All right, snakes. Okay. I don't know why I got so excited as the food got up next to 180. I was like, is it boar time? Or are we doing it? Specific time tomorrow. So I will be streaming tomorrow at 6 p.m. EST for my replay casting show. I, I typically have a ton of replays, and I, and I still do from the old patch, but I am in need of replays. So please, everybody... Submit them to Tooth and Tail TV at gmail.com. This is a community driven channel, community driven show. Like I, I literally don't have content if 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 you guys aren't participating. So so y'all are the real MVPs. Not me. I am just the guy yelling. Alright, double skunk coming out here from Horus. Meanwhile, the child's got some quick snakes. Getting into some toads. I like this. With this high ground vision, the snake will be able to uh, poke down this turret, no problem. I think three stacks is probably plenty, right? Yeah, it looks like it. And these snakes should do a good job against the skunks on paper. We'll see how the engagements go down. You know, I, I, what you really want against snakes is just an overwhelming amount of tier 1. But with the toads here as well, uh, the child is hoping to, to kind of delete the enemy tier 1 and leave these snakes alive to run rampant against the enemy skunks and, and pigs. Yeah, two pigs going down already and a skunk. Phenomenal here for the child. Horus realizes this is bad, wants to chase those snakes down, but smartly... Pulls back, and this is a rough spot. You know, do you commit to rebuilding these farms that are already kind of mined out? Do you cross your fingers and push in? Like, that wasn't a good trade specifically for Horus, and that's what what, what makes this even more difficult. It, it's like one thing if, you know, you lose the pigs, but you've got some momentum because they lost their Tier 2, or, or you, you traded really effectively with the Tier 1. But I like this from Horus getting into that second base. I, I think they're you know, probably thinking about it like, well, if I'm going to commit to some more farms, I might as well put those on a fresh base. And the child actually going to show an expansion of their own. We are getting pretty close to that five minute mark. So it's like, if you're not expanding by now, you're kind of sort of all inning. And try to punish these lizards, but doesn't quite have enough, or snakes rather, doesn't quite have enough lizards, but actually ends up picking one out. That's really important. But these toads, man, the Chad toads are coming up. Toad Magode here, nine toads. Ready to explode. Looking for that connection and gonna run into almost everything there, leaving just the skunks alive, which in theory the snakes can help clean up. But Horus, actually with the defender's advantage, they're getting some units out. Oh man, that skunk almost lived. That would have been very, very big. But this is where having the double tier two is, is very difficult. In these follow-up engagements, you just don't have the Tier 1 Warrens to very, very quickly reproduce a, a, an army. And these skunks are just going to be blocked for days. All the, the money is going to funnel into whatever Tier 1 Warrens you do have. And the child just being an absolute bully of this game. Going to run home, heal up the one snake that's left over. Probably wait a little bit for the second snake to come out. Maybe throw down another farm just to solidify things no he's not even gonna mess around he's just gonna move in he knows he's got a really big advantage here gonna push it gonna come in for the killing blow dropping down the hammer but 
Horace taps out before he gets the opportunity. 